We're going to talk about mediation. We're going to talk about mediation in the context of personality and personality conflict. And I know that usually, probably going back to school days and maybe even more recently, you all uh, are used to taking a quiz after you've had a lecture. <laughs> but today we're going to have the quiz before we do the lecture. And so I'm going to pass out a test booklet. I'm going to ask each of you to uh, answer the questions. And then we'll score together. And we're going to find out how everybody stacks up here in terms of personality. This is essentially a mini Myers-Briggs test. And, uh, and we're, going to, we're going, to, going to kind of match up and, and uh, maybe do some mediation, some, some uh, role-playing mediations once we, find out, once we find out who's who. The trick here is that um, you open the book. There are 60 questions. Go through them as quickly as you reasonably can. Don't, the, the, you, we don't want you to think about your answer. It is your first reaction. Circle the answer and move on to the next question. So let's pass these out here. So let's take a couple of minutes and talk briefly about the breakdown of personalities here. Remember, again, this is kind of a mini Myers-Briggs test. Uh, there'd be 16 categories in Myers-Briggs. We're only dealing with four. And the colors have nothing to do with it. It could be one, two, three, four, or Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus. Uh, the colors are just an artificial way of designating particular personality types. So, anyway, red personality. Bottom line of red personality is very simple. Let's just get it done. Don't waste my time. I want the executive summary. Don't talk to me too much. I just want to get it done. Orange personality. My daughter, Clara, in between a red and a yellow. Can't we just all get along? Come on, everybody, let's work together. We can all get along. Let's, let's sing kumbaya, and, and we're all going to be friends. Yellow, I have a better idea. I know how to do it differently. But I need to take the time to think about exactly how to do it right. You can imagine how that affects me and our household. Green is the wild card. It, uh, the green personality uh, is, is very creative um, uh, and, and likes, to do, likes to do kind of different things. But also, there's, there's an interesting trait in the green personality that um, there can be some anger sometimes in the green personality if things are, are a little different than, than what they're expecting or wanting them to be. So, what I'd like to do is pass around these dots, and I'd like you to put a dot somewhere on your chest, or your lapel, one showing your main color trait, and the other showing your second color trait. And should we put a one and two on the sticker, so that you can show which one's your main? And brilliant, Sally. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So we know who's who. So we'll pass these around. Well, while we're doing this, we'll say a little more about greens. Maybe we have, we have a green person here. The greens' greatest gift is their highly developed intuition, which allows them to sense what others are feeling. They rely on hunches, intuition, intuitive instincts, and gut insight. They look beyond the obvious. Greens are driven by idealism. Their primary purpose in life is to be a catalyst for change. Um, Greens live in a world of intangibles where hopes, dreams, and emotions are most important. They have rich, vivid imaginations and thrive, flourish, flourish, and grow when using their creative abilities. But they're mad. <laughs> say what? But they're mad. <laughs> but, 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 but it does say here, when greens feel put on, they can turn hostile and aggressive wow. in the face of perceived abuses a response which is totally out of character of their nature. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to pass out a booklet that will describe in a little more detail what these personality traits are all about. We'll spend a couple of minutes talking about them. Then I'd like to, to spend a few minutes addressing, uh, addressing some of the uh, psychological traits you may run into in doing mediations. And after that, we'll, we'll see if we can do a practice, uh, practice mediation. Okay. I'm going to pass these around. Okay. 
you can you can read you can read the length, more lengthy material, but if you turn to either the back of your books or to these the short handout here, it kind of gives a little bit of a summary. So let's look at let's look at our summary now. And let's start with basic needs. Basic needs. So res, like structure and organization, routine schedules to belong and serve. Reds are competitive. Reds like to be in control of the situation. And it says here submissive relationships. I'll tell you, we don't have that in our house. Uh, yellows, independence, autonomy, competency, and expertise. Problems to solve. Like to be problem solvers. Like intellectual challenges. Like achievement and uncomplicated relationships. Oranges, strong support systems, group approval, team participation, minimal changes, structure and security, harmony and balance, and compliant relationships. And the last one's really important. Greens, fun, playful environment, individuality, continual change, flexibility, opportunity for creativity, and intimate relationships, and we won't go there. More important for what we're talking about in terms of mediation is not necessarily the basic needs, but instead the motivations and the responses to conflict. So let's take a look at those for a minute. Motivations, rent, power, status, money. Many years ago, when we had first moved from Chicago to East Grand Rapids, my wife and I were sitting in front of the fireplace well before my daughter was born. And, and she said, well, let's for fun make a list of things you'd like to have. And at the top of the list, and we knew nothing about this at the time, money and power. Oh, really? Wow, right there under red. <laughs> Financial material incentives, control, and abiding by or enforcing the rules. Reds like to have things right within the box. You know what the rules are. You're going to get it done, but just get it done the right way. Uh, yellows are motivated by achievement and recognition, educational and personal incentives, position of competency and expertise. Yellows love to show their expertise and creating new processes and new rules. How can we do it better? How can we do it differently? Oranges, material off time incentives, recognition for a job well done, they like to get along, reward the benefit that benefit the family or group, and following the rules. Family is very important to oranges. Green, is it really, green really is a wild card. Travel, financial incentives, recognition for ideas, personal rewards, and importantly, no rules. <laughs> no rules. Okay. Causes of conflict. <laughs> Reds. <laughs> Wasting my time. Not having my needs put first. You know how often I get yelled at for that? Being taken advantage of. I hate being taken advantage of. It doesn't happen very often. Losing at anything. <laughs> Lazy, unproductive behavior among sloths. Inequity and responsibilities. Not getting my way. Somebody disagreeing with me. Emotional outbursts. And for goodness sake, don't give me a lengthy explanation. Just the executive summary. I'm a quick learner. Oranges. Don't like being treated impersonally. Don't like insensitivity from others. Let's get along. Not being able to share feelings. How come, how come you won't listen to, to what I'm feeling? Threatened security. Criticism. Not being appreciated. Accusa accusations of being self-centered and not being helped or supported with tasks. Yellows, not having time to think. It takes forever for him to make a decision. And then, after it's taken forever, if you question her decision, you get your knees taken out from under you. False accusations. 
being humiliated in public, doubting their integrity, challenging their logic, being accountable for others' mistakes, dealing with emotional issues, cutting them off when they're talking. I have a bad habit of doing that because I never get the executive summer. <laughs> Greens are offended if they're not taken seriously. They're being criticized or ignored. Jealousy does not sit well with Greens. Being suppressed or controlled getting told when to do something, time constraints and restrictions, being micromanaged. Greens are free spirit. They like to be out there doing it their way, doing their own thing. So, what do you do if you're in a situation with someone and you run into one of these conflicts? How do you deal with it? Well, the responses to conflicts are what reds do is turn impatient, abrupt, argumentative. Who says I'm judgmental? <laughs> we become reactive, excitable, and easily angered, controlling and demanding, attack others aggressively and personally, and micromanage both people and tasks. Yellows become tactless, argumentative, and aggressive, distance themselves from the situation assume intellectual superiority over others. How many times have I heard in the confines of our home, I'm a yellow, I know better. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, challenge others thinking and logic and display emotional indifference. Oranges, go into avoidance and become overly accommodating. That's my daughter to a T. My wife and my son-in-law do not get along. They cannot be in the same room together. And when they have to be in the same room together, my daughter just <laughs> tries somehow to keep the peace in the room. <laughs> Worry, fret, and react with emotion. We get tears sometimes from her as well. Become antagonistic and make sarcastic comments. Hold emotions in until the boiling point, then explode. That's Clara become emotionally controlling and manipulating. And I think that's probably probably fair as well, at least as to my, as to my daughter. Greens, when they're, they uh, hit conflict, withdraw and change the subject. Become emotionally immobilized and submissive. Suppress feelings. Lose objectivity. Seek group support. And interestingly, this, this is a surprise to me, blame themselves for everything. I would have thought that was more of an orange trait, but but apparently, according to uh, Carol Ritberg, it's not. Okay, finally, last page. This is kind of critical. Ways to prevent conflict. Okay, you're dealing with a red. You're stuck in a room with me. What do you do? You clearly define the responsibilities, the tasks, and the guidelines. Who's going to do what? Who's going to take what responsibility? What are the parameters within which we're supposed to work? And let's get it done. Don't waste my time with lengthy explanations or sentiment. Be direct and straightforward. I like people, when I'm meeting with them in a room, to quarrel with me about points. I like to argue points of law. I like to make sure we get to the right decision. Be direct. Don't beat around the bush. Just the facts. Okay, remember Dragnet? Just the facts, man. <laughs> Sergeant Friday. Don't expect people, don't expect us to change. The harder we're pushed, the more resistant to change I will become. And that is exactly true. Avoid arguments, <coughs> aggressive behavior, and power struggles. Uh, I still like arguments, at least quotes. Yellows. Draw on their problem solving abilities. Oh! Oh, you're yellow. Well, maybe you'd have a great way to resolve this situation. What do you think about this? How would you tackle this problem? Don't force the yellow into making decisions. Take your time. Think about it and take your time. Recognize their competency and abilities. They're strategists and conceptual thinkers. So include them in activities that require those kinds of skills. 
Avoid emotional outbursts. Don't get mad and scream at your wife because she's taking too much time. And remember that they're more interested in your respect than they are in your compliments. Again, I can't tell you how accurate that is about my wife. You give my wife a compliment and she'll slap it right back at you. And she has told me a gazillion times, you don't respect me, you don't respect me. That's what I need is your respect. Well, I do respect her, she just doesn't get it. <laughs> You'd enjoy the show, believe me. Okay, if you're dealing with oranges, how do you avoid conflict? Explain how they can help and draw on their people skills. Critical. Include them in the tasks and strengthen interpersonal relationships. Share your emotions and needs with them. Make them feel comfortable and needed. Give support and encouragement by being their friend. Get along. And if you must criticize them, be extra sensitive to their feelings. Don't make them feel unappreciated. Dad, you're yelling at me. I'm not yelling at you. You aren't yelling? I'll yell at you. <laughs> okay, greens. Recognize greens for their creativity and ideas because you'll find greens are really very creative people. Uh, be serious in your compliments and praise. Sincere. Include them in activities that are fun. Greens like to have fun, not work related. Don't be caught off guard if greens have mood swings. That's just part of the personality. Draw them into projects where creative and fresh ideas are needed. Don't treat them impersonally or criticize them in front of their friends. That's not a good thing. And use, just in this last one, use their name. Use their name when speaking to them. Isn't that, isn't that curious? So, that's a little bit about the, about the traits and the personalities. You can read more about it uh, when, you, when you have a few minutes. I'd like to, before we start our, our uh, uh, sample mediations, I'm going to pass out a fact pattern. Uh, and while you're reviewing the fact pattern, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we face in mediation when we're dealing with different personalities who are there to have their dispute mediated. So, Sally, if you could start. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of these. Okay, while we're passing those out, you, you start reading the fact pattern. The fact pattern involves a divorce situation, uh, which are classic cases of irreconcilable disputes. Uh, there is nothing worse than having to become involved in a divorce situation. If you all have been through that, some of you have been through that, you know how hard that is, how emotionally trying it is, and to either be a representative of or a mediator in a divorce situation is very challenging. So that's what our fact pattern is going to be this afternoon. But while you're familiarizing yourself with the fact pattern and not to be too distracting, I'd like to, to note that in mediation, we often come across all sorts of different personalities. And even in the ones I did with Sally this, uh, this past semester, um, the, the, the few we did, what we do, four or five of them maybe, maybe, maybe six, um, the, the people who were there to have their disputes mediated were, were really very different. Almost everyone was different with different thoughts and needs. And so uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk about that in two different contexts. One context is the um, person that you might run into that has genuine mental health issues. Things like, I mean, I, first, I don't think you're going to come across a schizophrenic um, in, in your mediations. Hopefully you won't. But, but if you do, I mean, if you ever do, you know, Katie bar the door, there, there's just no telling, no telling what, what would happen and, and whether the dispute could be resolved. Um, there are also people that come in that are depressed. They're depressed because of the circumstances life has thrown at them. They're, circum they're depressed because of the dispute that's out there. They're depressed because they can't resolve their dispute, and they want to resolve it. They can't get it resolved. Um, you'll run into people, you'll run into people, and you may recognize it in a mediation situation. Um, with bipolar disorder. I have a brother who has bipolar disorder. And it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to cope with things often. He went through a divorce. And, 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 and I, actually, I actually went and tried to help with that. And during the course of, of that proceeding, which was a mediation, this was a mediated divorce, 
And during the course of that proceeding, he looked at me and said, I can't deal with this. You just take care of it. I'll do whatever you say. I'm going in the other room. Tell me when this is over. And I literally had a power of attorney, not to act as lawyer, but to act as him in the mediation, to mediate it with his, his wife to get it resolved. He passed by over this order and could not even tolerate going through the process. Um, what about substance abuse situations? Uh, substance abuse can, can result in abnormal reactions uh, in situations involving disputes and conflict resolution. And you, you kind of want to be on the lookout for that. It, sometimes you can tell. The, the, the police tell me that you can tell that they look at people's eyes and things like that as to how the eye movement is and how the pupils are dilated and that sort of thing. Um, uh, here's another one that, that uh, I think the women in the room will understand. Uh, women who have just given birth, uh, often for quite a length of time after giving birth, uh, have some, some special emotional issues that are caused by hormone imbalances. Uh, my, my, my new partner, who is just a great friend of mine and, and has worked with me very closely over the past six years on everything imaginable, had a baby two years ago, a nice baby boy. And she had this hormonal imbalance. And, and if she was here, she'd tell you, she was an emotional wreck, a wreck for four months. And it took her six or eight months to finally finally get back to normal. And and that's just that's just part of being a woman and having children sometimes. And but it's something that you should be aware of if you face that situation in a mediation. Now, more likely, however, than running into someone in a mediation that has or that you can recognize has genuine mental health issues are um, just the kind of kind of pain in the neck uh, circumstances that maybe you can recognize by doing a quick color analysis when you're going through the mediation and you things aren't going as you want and you think, geez, is that person a red? Oh, well, maybe I know how to deal with that. But you may find that you come across angry participants. We had those in the mediations that Sally and I were working on this past autumn. People came in angry. Um, and, and emotional sometimes. Not necessarily angry and emotional, but sometimes emotional, sometimes angry. Impatient. Come on, look. Here's my proposal. What's wrong with it? Let's just agree that this is a fair proposal and move on. Why are we taking so much time? I've got to get back to work. I don't have time to fuss with this this morning. Have you all seen that in mediations? I've certainly seen that in mediations. Manipulators. Manipulators in mediation. You ever seen that in the room? A dogmatic evaluators. I've looked at this. I'm right. And you can't tell me I'm wrong because I've absolutely checked all this out and I know I'm right. We had one of those. A guy came in uh, to, to do a mediation and um, he looked at the film and there was no incident. And the other guy said, well, yeah, but I fell down and I hurt myself and I've got injuries in my leg and my back. And the other guy said, no, no incident, didn't happen. Sorry, it simply didn't happen. Well, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, you, you, have to, you have to talk to the person and, and suggest ways that maybe they're wrong or maybe they ought to relook at the circumstances because if someone is that dogmatic in a mediation, eh, you're not going to get settled. You're simply not going to get settled unless you can use tricks and personality tricks to try to move the pe person around. And then we have the competitors, the competitors in the mediation. They want to win that in the mediation. And they don't really care how they get there as long as they come out on top. Once again, using your color traits and your personality identifiers, you may be able to use your mediation, mediation trained skills to work through the process and ultimately get people to achieve a desired result. OK, let's take a couple of questions. And then we're going to break off into teams and we're going to do some, some role play. Could I, take, could I take questions or comments from anyone, please? Someone must have a question or a comment. Citizen participants yes, sir. don't wear these little dots on their clothing. <laughs> How do you do a quick analysis of this person is this is a You know, you have to you have to trust your instincts. Um, I think 
and, and obviously you, you've had, because we met and we actually mediated together, um, you've had a lifetime of experience dealing with people and clients and cases and all that. Um, and I think that, that the more times people are involved in mediations, the more you get to recognize the different kinds of people that come in. And I think based upon some of the stuff that's in the materials I've passed out, you just take your best guess and, and try to try to move on and do it that way. That's about all you can do. That's, that's what I do, and I'm no, no more expert at it than you are. Please. As you read through the ways of handling... Please, John. Joe. Joe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you read through the ways of handling the encryption colors, it struck me that, well, there is a way to deal with everybody. You know, there's some of those seem like, you could have, have, has anyone put these together and said, you know, these are good ways to simply deal with people at whatever color they are. And, and indeed, indeed, they're good ways to deal with people, even if you're not in mediation. Yeah. Well, there's you know. uh, When you are working together on a project like mediation, I mean, that's what mediation brings. That's why we're talking about this. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but no, your point is well taken, and, and certainly the, the, uh, uh, the skills can be transposed, juxtaposed. And uh, uh, it, it certainly isn't one size, one size fits all. So part of it is recognizing what your own uh, impulses are likely to be that will be abrasive to somebody else. Indeed. Right? Indeed. And, and you know what? That's something that I have to be very careful about. I should also. <laughs> I also think that I, I was um, hoping that we could also think about our co-mediator and what their color are. Yeah. And that we could even use Good this point, language. So. Um, when we're talking ahead of time, I'm a, I'm a red, I'm a yellow, and what does that mean, and, and what, what things like to trigger me, and what, how, could, how could it be helpful? So, yeah, good. Please. I, I guess I was thinking that if, um, if we go into the situation with uh, a mindset that if, if we feel a button push, if we feel ourselves reacting, then somehow be able to step back, take a moment, and think through, okay, I'm reacting because I come from this perspective. What's happening, what might be happening with the party? That's a really good idea. And in fact, um, we experienced that this, this fall in one of the mediations. I don't remember who I, I don't remember who I was with. It was one of you guys or someone else. But uh, I actually turned to my co-mediator and said, "Let's you and I step out in the hallway and, and come to ten and try to figure out what's going on here." That's a really good idea under the right circumstances. Other thoughts or comments or suggestions? Just real, yeah, please. Real quick re um, reaction is that it seems to me that red and green with the the Different views of time would be Christmas. <laughs> That'd be uh, inherently challenging for those two to work together because one is very conscious of time and the other feels time is sort of boundless, you know, and those are difficult to reconcile. They are. <laughs> so, they are. Yeah. Good point. All right, I think what we should do is count off by threes and we'll break into groups of, um, we'll call you petitioners who have a dispute to mediate and mediators and, and uh, using this fact pattern let's spend um, 10 minutes mediating and then we'll shift around and in 30 minutes we probably can get everyone to have been either side and also the mediator. Okay. About one thing, if you have let's say green type personalities who are, and you're thinking about creative solutions, is it better to try to do a lot of caucus to listen to that. I'm wondering in terms of what you came up with, was that done as a group or through caucus? We did it as a group, but I think it probably it would have been more realistic in caucus. Tell me what do you think about that? Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of it in terms of, uh, I thought that the, the man's role was written as a red role. Yeah. So when yeah. I was playing yeah. him, I turned into a red person. So, 
I, I didn't think we were going to make much progress. Okay, so <laughs> we have a comment over here, too. Well, yeah, yeah, Jeff? I think that uh, with a couple greens involved in the decision-making process, uh, there's a lot of creativity going on there. The question is, how do you really tap into that and let it, let it flourish and not sit on it? Um, so I thought it was a is it, is it better done when the parties are together, or is it better well, done separately, thought, or does it depend? I thought it was better when the parties are together because, at least from this scenario here, they both are raising the child, which I thought was a very strong point. They're still partners there, and therefore could still be partners in resolving this dispute with, with little acrimony because we're still parents, mm -hmm. and we don't want the dollar to Bill over into this other good relationship. So, other other thoughts? Uh, um, thank you. I think yeah, it's part of the question if you have two different color types, which you probably are going to have in a marriage. Mm -hmm. Asking them questions to help them understand what's the underlying emotion, because divorce isn't just about money. Mm -hmm. And would you do that during during the course of? Uh, mediation having the parties together, or would you do that one on one separately? I think, think? mediators vary. I think doing it together is best if it works, but if it becomes verbally abusive or you're not getting anywhere, you caucus. But ultimately, you're trying to get them to understand each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Well, I, I yeah. second that. I think you, have, you get more traction on the money when you give in the emotions as much as you can because people are willing to maybe bend a little bit more. Than Maybe not all personality types, but, but understand. Yeah, and when you understand, I think there's more flexibility that comes with that often. And with the child, there's lots of other things that are unresolved here. What about college education? The ongoing expenses that would, uh, how we're going to share those. So there's lots of good ways to come at this. Yes, please. One of the things that we talked about was the, um, if, if the mediators are green and, and they enjoy solving problems and creativity, if it's supposed to be the party's solution, is how do you avoid dictating, you know, trying to dictate a solution and instead make sure that it's a solution that, um, that they feel like they've come up with and indeed have, perhaps have come up with, um, how, what's that process? Um, that, that allows you to get, get to where you're going instead of the mediator sort of marching down a road that blows up because it doesn't really belong to either, either of the parties. And how do you think about the questions that you ask? Um, to, to induce them to come up come with the greatest solution in your driving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts on that? Well, I think Please you jump. said it. He mentioned questions. And so what you, what you have to be thinking about is not the solution, but what kinds of questions would get them to think some other way than they are. And, and acute listening because, you know, I've had the experience sitting in mediation where I thought they were offering something sort of kind of, or that they were, it was teasing around in their head or maybe it was close to the surface and a question that might uh, indicate that you were think you were wondering if you were hearing this um, and bring out some of that. Well, that. That goes to an interesting point, and I see we're out of time. Let's let's close close it with with an interesting point you're raising, maybe in response to Bill's question. You know, one thing you could do, and I don't know if this is unethical or dishonest, <laughs> but you could when when you think you've heard someone say something that's close to the resolution that Bill's creatively thinking <laughs> ought to be the solution. You could say, well, gee, let me make sure I understand. Is it this? But you, you weave it just a little bit <laughs> toward, toward uh, um, a direction that you think they might go in. You've got to be careful with that. And I don't know whether that's ethical or not. But, but sometimes in the course of a mediation, in the course of discussions and negotiations, you can actually find a way, find a way to do that. But it's critical. Bill's right. It's critical that the dispute be the party's resolution, not your resolution. And the trick is, having us as mediators figure out how to get them there. Well, it's 1 o'clock. Thank you for coming. I really enjoyed seeing you guys, and, and, and especially you.